What's up? My name is Patricia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited that you did because I have some things that I want to share with you. Family, wow, wow, wow. This book has been truly just changing my life slowly but surely. The last few ones that I've read have really been so impactful and life-changing and um i've been sharing them with you guys on social media here on youtube we've been breaking them down together a lot of you guys have been reading um these same books or have read them or started to read them after i recommended them guys this is a really really good one so first of all i would like to say if you're tuning in for the first time welcome here on my channel we discuss matters of the mind the body and so I like to pass on gems that will promote your spiritual growth and help you navigate through life. OK, so thank you so much for joining. Um, so we're going to have a discussion today. We're going to talk now. By the way, it's 10. Well, it's late. OK, the sun is already um, set, but I really wanted to do this video with you guys today. That's why I have my robe on. That's why I have tea and not coffee like I typically do. It's ginger tea. So recently I've been reading this book that I want that I have already. If you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, I've been talking about this book everywhere, Snapchat, and it is called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra, and it has changed a girl's life, okay? A lot of the books that I've been reading lately have really been impacting me in such a positive way. What I like about this book is it runs through the seven um, spiritual laws, and after every law, it, it's there's a whole chapter on application. A lot of times you read something, and it impacts you, right? It moves you, and like, this is awesome, but I don't know how to apply this specifically in my life and or to begin to apply it in my life and I love the fact that this book is broken down in that way because it makes it a lot easier to apply this book is called the seven spiritual laws of success even the author says that it really should be called the seven spiritual laws of life right um it, ugh, I was gonna who I was gonna dig I was gonna dig into it but we gonna wait we gonna hold back there's so much I could talk about in this book Guys, this book is written all over, highlighted, underlined, everything, because there's so much goodness in it. And there's so much I could talk about, right? I'm not gonna talk about the whole thing. Y'all know how I can get. I say I'm not gonna talk about the book in, in full, but then I end up talking a lot about the book. We're not gonna do that this time, I promise, okay? There are only a few laws that I'm probably gonna cover on here. Today, we're gonna just start light, okay? Light, there's a lot more I can talk about. There's one in particular, I think it's the fifth or sixth law, the law of intention and desire. That one was a hard pill for me to swallow, especially given my spiritual background as a Christian, was difficult for me to swallow. And so that one, I have to do more research, some meditation, prayer, and also some uh, some soul searching to come back and, and really deliver that one in, 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 in a way that's easily understood because I think a lot of you guys may be struggling with that particular one um, who have read this book and that come from a similar background. Like I said, today we're gonna start light, but don't, be, don't, don't get it twisted. This stuff is deep. We're gonna talk about law number four, which is the law of least effort, okay? least effort let's talk about it so this principle the law of least effort is the principle of least action and no resistance so this law really had to do with the flow of energy so his whole point is you spend a lot of energy um paying attention to uh the ego and forcing a lot of things to happen in your life rather than just allowing your life to just be that in and of itself is a lot but there's a specific part of this um law that i want to get to that really <laughs> hit me i don't want you to mistake this for we shouldn't try or we shouldn't have goals or we shouldn't and that that is covered also in the law in the law of attention and desire or we shouldn't work towards um those goals but um we spend a lot of energy forcing things that aren't meant for us um doing things that we it was never meant for us to do and um accompanying ourselves with people that should never be in our lives and constantly are using this energy in the wrong way that could be used in a different way that could positively positively influence our life okay but we're not getting to, we're not gonna talk about it. let's talk about the three components of this law stick with me i promise so the first one is acceptance the second thing is responsibility the last thing is defenselessness okay so the first thing except is accepting things as they are and we've talked about this before a lot of times 
times we spend this energy. Think about how often you spend energy wishing things were different, wishing this never, this never happened, or wishing that you didn't live in this house, or wishing that you had this car, or wishing that you had this job, or wishing that you had these friends, these resources. Because if only you had this, you'd be able to do this. And if only you had that, you'd be able to, if only you had a million dollars, you'd be able to pay off your bills and put a down payment on a home. If you only had this, if you only had a baby, if you only had a man, if you only had whatever, life would magically be okay. And everything would be grand and everything would be hunky-dory. But according to Chopra, we spend too much energy focusing on the things that could be or would have been, right? We really should be releasing that energy and learning to accept things as they are. Not complacency now, let's not get it twisted, but accepting this is what it is. This is what it is and I can move from here. So yes, you can wish more for your future. However, right now in this moment, accept things as they are. You only ever have this moment, right? We've talked about this in the past. The past is gone, right? You don't have that. The future's not here. You don't have that. The only thing that's ever present that you always have that's always here is the present. Accept the moment as it is, accept it as a gift and wish better for the future. Okay. So that's one acceptance. Two, this is the one this is the one that hit me deep and I'm gonna share a few quotes with you from the book. The second one is responsibility. A lot of us, a lot of us, I won't say who, but a lot of us do it. We tend to put responsibility on other people. Even to justify how, not only what we do, all right? The author took it one step further, but how we feel. We won't even take responsibility for how we feel. Let me read you this, guys, and I underlined it. I don't know if you guys can see and wrote my little notes here on the side. It says, these are your feelings, and your feelings are not someone else's fault. When you recognize and understand this completely, you are ready to take responsibility for how you feel and change it. Take responsibility for your feelings. They didn't make you feel this way, right? It doesn't matter what they did. They lied, they cheated, they backstabbed, they they uh, betrayed. They didn't make you feel angry. They didn't make you feel sad. I know, I know, but Patricia, they did, but they didn't make you feel, no matter how horrible, no matter how horrible a thing, that he or she ever did or ever said to you. They didn't make you feel any type of way. Your feelings have everything to do with you. Yes, affected by circumstance, environment, and consequently, people, if you let it, right? And then there's a sense of this, yeah, healthy, get it out, vent, therapy, meditation, whatever it is that you need to do, but essentially, however it is that you feel is your responsibility. And because it's your responsibility, you have the opportunity, you have the capability of changing it. And if you accept things as they are, you are ready to take responsibility for your situation and for all the events you see as problems. It is what it is. And guess what? Even the author said this. I'm going to see if I can find the direct quote for you guys. He says, all problems contain the seeds of opportunity. And this awareness allows you to take the moment and transform it to a better situation or thing. Later on, this is the one that really, really, really got me. I'm going to tweet this here in a minute. It says, there is a, he there is a hidden meaning behind all events. And this hidden meaning is serving your own evolution. All things work together to the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. There is hidden meaning in all these problems and all these obstacles that you're facing. Then I think those of you guys who are able to accept things as they are, truly understand that all things work together, that there is hidden meaning. There are things that I went through, guys, it was like, Lord, could you have taught me that any other way? Could I have gotten that lesson any other way than having that happen to me? Yes, all things work together and there is hidden meaning behind all events and this hidden meaning is serving 
your own evolution. Oh, I love that. I really, really did love that. That second component of law of least effort. We covered what I really wanted to discuss in this video, and that was number two, responsibility. A lot of us don't know how to take responsibilities for the way that we feel. We rather blame it on other people. But when we take responsibility, um, then we, we give ourselves the power back to change it. Um, if we give other people the responsibility, then how we feel is determined by what they do. How, how miserable is that? How we feel is determined by what other people do? That's so miserable. Once we take responsibility and we know that we have the power to change how we feel, to change how we see things, to change how, yes, it's natural to feel sad and, and upset if, if someone does something that's harmful or betrays you in some sort of way, but you have the opportunity to not stay there, but to change how it is. So how you feel is not determined, should not be determined on what other people do. Okay, you have responsibility. And the last thing um, is component of the law of least effort is defenselessness. Relinquishing yourself from the need to persuade and to convince others. Defending your viewpoints, defending your decisions, defending um, how you feel, right? Defending your direction. Another part is when you're defensive, what do you do? You blame others, right? Because you refuse. And here's another, the word coming back to take responsibility. And so you're defensive. Well, I'm only doing this because you do that. Or I only feel this way because you did this. Or I only, I only do this because this is the way I was brought up. Or this is what happened in my past. Or this is defensive desist to defend there there is no argument if there is no point of view to defend fighting resisting defending um is is wasted wasted energy for this fourth law law of least effort definitely caused me to stop and and take a look at my own life and to ask myself, am I pushing through life or am I flowing through life, if that makes sense? And in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm pushing, meeting resistance as opposed to flowing through life, right? Um, and that, that second component really hit me in a special way. I had to ask myself, am I accepting Right? Am I accepting of things as they are right now? Or am I focused on things that I coulda, shoulda, woulda? I had to ask myself, am I taking responsibility for where I currently am, how I currently feel, or am I pointing fingers? Um, and three, am I being defensive, right? If I, am I feeling the need to justify how I flow, flow through life or justify my points of views or justify myself and who I am and why I am the way that I am? Or am I accepting, right? And open and free. And I have to ask you guys the same, the same tough, the same tough questions. There is wasted energy here that could be working um, in your favor and not wasted on defending yourself on blaming others um, and, all, and on wishing things were different. So that's what I'm gonna leave with you guys today. Hey, did you guys hear anything that helped, that moved you, um, that you know that you need to work on? Let me know down below. Have you read this book? Let me know down below. Hopefully the next thing we talk about, that'll be on Sunday. Actually, I might upload my favorites video on Sunday. Maybe next Thursday or next Sunday we'll talk about the law of intent and desire, um, which should be a really, really, really big one. I want all of you guys to show up for that one. Let me know what you guys think in 
the comment section again. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. And I'll see you guys Sunday with another video. I hope you guys are well and in good spirits whenever it is that this video meets you. Like I said, if you guys have missed any of my recent uploads, definitely check um, my channel out. I'll leave some more videos in the cards and also down below for you guys. Like I said, thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you guys um, Sunday with another video. And as always, God bless.